Bell Law is the reason why I'm here presenting this right now, right? They have brought value to you because they value you and the business that you do with them. So that being said, they are the reason why I'm here discussing this. Now, this isn't used as a marketing thing for me. Obviously, like I said earlier, I am a lender. That is the thing I do. But this is something when it comes to chat GPT, they are aware that this is what I do and I do it at a high level. So they wanted me to come in and kind of teach you some of the things to help you with your business, to allow you to be more efficient, proficient. So I have not used it, but I'm very interested and curious. Good, Jeff, you are my people. Being interested and curious is the biggest thing as long as we utilize this in order to do the things that it is we need to do and utilize this tool. So I'm going to screen share. I'm going to spend a lot of time on a screen share because I'm going to show you various ways that we can do this. So if anybody has something that they need to, to say or anything like that, if I don't get to you, I will circle back when the questions pop up and we'll go back into the questions and we'll answer some of them. Uh, so bear with me here. We're just going to do a quick screen share. Yeah, we're going to jump right in. All right, so ChatGPT, I know a lot of you have heard a lot about it. Uh, it is on openai.com. You can go in. There's a couple different ways you can access this. You can use the free um, portion of it, or you can use the paid portion. The only difference I have seen in the two is one provides to you, the, the paid portion uh, provides to you a little bit better user, user experience as far as being able to get information to you and being able to give you a little bit more robust uh, responses. Now, is that the the only way to do it? It's not, it's only like $20 a month. And listen, I don't make any money whatsoever off, off promoting this, but I utilize this as a tool on a regular basis. So I'm gonna demonstrate to you a couple different prompts that you can throw in here. And we're gonna start with something very simplistic. And this is somewhere where we've always, or, or where we have been in the past. And that is something just as simple as a, a weekly email, right? A lot of us search for the proper and the, the perfect CRM in order to provide our, our clients with a weekly update just to stay in front of them. Let's face it, most clients on the market now, they went from, hey, I just bought a house and it only took me 37 seconds after I was pre-approved to find the perfect home and put an offer in to now, hey, I'm still looking for a house. It's been day 37. I still haven't found anything. Mortgage rates keep going up. Please stay in front of me because eventually I will, right? So those people we need to provide to them some sort of email template, some something that we can consistently send on a regular basis. And let's face it, if we were great writers, we would probably all be authors, but we're not. We're real estate professionals. And so that's what we're great at. So let's utilize technology. So here's what we're going to put in. We're going to provide a prompt. And like anything else in chat GPT, information in is information out. So if you put bad info in, you get bad info out. So if we said, uh, provide to me an email template for clients. Listen, it has no idea for clients for what? It's going to want to know what purpose are we going to utilize this information for? Again, bad in, bad out, right? So let's just stop this generation because anytime we complete a generation, this thing is learning. It's learning as we progress forward. So it's picking up the information and says, okay, uh, this is what he wants next time. It's almost like having a dog, right? You teach a dog how to sit and it understands that when you say sit, it wants you to sit. But if you teach the dog to sit and every time it sits, it raises its paw, every time you give the prompt of sit, it's gonna sit and raise its paw. That's because you have taught it what you really mean by providing the information. So you put, you are a real estate professional in the Nashville, Tennessee market. The home values continue to rise as well as mortgage interest rates you have time and i continue to respond to this as you i am treating the machine as its own individual person okay so i am programming the machine to be a nashville real estate professional in a market similar to what we're in bear in mind that chat gpt can only go up to 2021 and so it doesn't realize the market we're currently in. We can't jump in there and say, hey, in today's market, uh, make me an, an email template for a real estate professional. So we're going to provide us some very robust information. You have a client, uh, you have clients who are on the fence about purchasing uh, due to the market. Please provide to me a email template for weekly follow-up. 
Okay, so all we're going to do, we provided information. Listen, the act of that, besides the fact that I'm a really bad speller, it's it doesn't take a whole lot of time, right? So we provided the information that we want, and all of a sudden, it starts spitting it out. And it's going to spit out this information, and just like that dog or that puppy that we talked about a little bit earlier, when we analyze this information, we're going to say, was this relative to what it is that we were looking to do? And the fact of the matter is, if it's not, tell it, this is not what I'm looking for. But if it is, let's let it know this was exactly what I was looking for. Thank you. Because again, the machine is learning. You'll notice on this left-hand side, it currently says new chat. Eventually, this will evolve to something and it will allow us to refer back to this. So as we teach the puppy, we can go back to that particular puppy thread and say, okay, you learned everything here. Let's continue to grow from that. So it provides to us an email, even gives us the subject line, Nashville Market Update and Home Buying Insights. It breaks it down over the past week, the Nashville market has been or has seen a specific, and then you can provide the blanks, fill in the blanks, right? Uh, increase the home value. So this is information that all of us have access to. We can go in, we can look at the database, we can figure out, okay, what was that? But what I want you to think of chat GPT as is this. You are a person that is having a home built. And you need somebody to come out and throw the two by fours up and to build the foundation and the exterior. That's all you need because you're going to go in and you're going to paint the walls. You're going to, you're going to figure out, you know, do we do granite? Do we do quartz? So this is setting up the framework. You're going to polish the details. In fact, you may go into this and say, ah, I really don't like the word uptick. In fact, the word uptick drives me nuts. Let's go ahead and delete that and put going up or something of that nature, right? Or uptick doesn't sound like me, okay? So this gives us the framework. This gives us the, the structure of the home. Now you can go in and you can paint the walls. But what if, what if I said, could you provide to me another template for week two? So now we have our follow-up for next week, okay? We don't have to rack our brain every week and go back and say, huh, what about this? What about this? What about that? So this, imagine the time consumption just in typing this. By the way, while this is being typed, I'm walking over here, I'm grabbing my cup of coffee. I got my little bit of cream that I'm putting into it, my little bit of sugar, I'm stirring it, right? And I come and I sit back down. By the time I sit back down, this thing's completed. And ChatGPT costs about $20 a month, okay? So this thing has been completed. It's done the work for me. A copywriter would cost you hundreds of dollars to put together something like this. Now, using the chat, I want, I want to do something fun here. Somebody put the name of a famous person, a famous person that you would recognize them speaking if they were speaking to you. Anybody. Can't move forward without an answer. Anybody just put a famous, there we go. Grant Cardone, I like it. I like it. Uh, please, now here's the fun thing. Let's ask it. Do you know who Grant Cardone? We're gonna ask it. Do you know who that is? And it's gonna provide us, yes, Who who is this? Because let's face it, there's a lot of people with a lot of different names or, or names that are similar that could be out in the world. So we want to make sure that it's the same person, right? And so I would say, after the information is provided, can you uh, do the above in the tone of Grant Cardone? So now we're changing the tonality of the email based on a different individual, okay? Oh, here we go. It's going to describe. Um, what I did is I asked it to do the above prompt in Grant Cordone's tone, okay? So we need to go back and say, could you provide me a week three email in the tone of Grant Cordone? And guess what? ChatGPT doesn't care if you can spell well. They don't care about your punctuation. They don't care about any of the other stuff, right? So now it's going to go in and it's going to do so in the tone that it knows from scanning the internet of the individual that we requested. You see words like 10x. We know that Grant Cordon constantly talks about 10x. In fact, that's what he's primarily known for. Okay. Rate reality check. Mortgage rates covering around 
Yeah, they've nudged up, but winners adapt. Let's strategize to lever leverage those numbers, right? So it's doing it in a different tonality. It was funny because I taught one of these classes and in one of these classes that I taught that is just like this, one of the people that was suggested was a rapper by the name of DMX. And so it's funny because if we go in here and say, do the same email in the tone of DMX, it is gonna change it into that. Here's the reason why we bring this up. The way we may talk to individuals may depend on what it is that we're looking to do with them, how we're marketing to them. The way we may construct an email to a doctor may be different than the way we construct an email to somebody that works at GM on the assembly line, which may be different than the way we put together an email to an engineer, right? Different professions, different people, they speak differently. Now I'm not saying take Grant Cordone and provide that information to everybody, but you have the ability to. And so if I said something like, could you do the above email in a professional tone uh, that is going to go to a, let's say doctor, it's going to change the verbiage. It's going to be considerably more formal and direct. We talk about words like analysis. Is it fair to say that doctors are gonna speak in terms like analysis, overview? These are all terms that they're gonna utilize, right? And so now it's changed the structure. Here's a funny thing that you can do as well. And I, I say funny, it's not necessarily funny, but we have all had clients in the past that maybe they didn't speak English as their first language. So what if I had clients that also spoke Spanish in a section of my clients I sent an email to, I needed it to be a little different. Can you do the above email in Spanish? Now we're speaking different languages. And by the way, I haven't done anything. I, I don't have to go back and retype the email. I literally took the email as I understood it in English and had it translated in Spanish. And by the way, here we go. We're walking away. We're making our cup of coffee again, or cream, or sugar, or everything, we come back and this has already been completed. Do we have any questions on this particular section? Sorry, I'm, I'm moving everybody around to make it easier to see the notes. Okay, no questions so far, we're good there. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put a stop to this. So this is the weekly email update, right? And again, this is something that we can polish, we can change it, uh, we can do whatever it is we need to do in order to fit who it is we are or what it is we sound like. I go to a new window and I want to talk about something that many of us, and I say many of us because I see this quite a bit online. People say, hey, what would you do as a description for this particular property? And because we're on a call with a bunch of realtors and title people, I know it's very possible that if you really, really want to know where I live, it would not be hard to figure out. Yeah, you just do a property record search and you figure it out. So we're going to do a listing description. Please. Okay, so we're going to ask you first. You are a real estate agent. And you have a new listing located in Williamson uh, County, Tennessee at 3031 South Drive. Brain Hill, Tennessee, 37174. And we're going to let it fire away. So it always has this disclaimer, okay? This legal disclaimer. It's not a real estate agent. It's telling you, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a realtor. I'm not a lawyer. But what you're prompting it to do is act in the mind as if they're a real estate agent. The biggest thing is, is this is pulling all this data just from the internet, right? And so we have a, a very basic description of the home. And so let's go through this. And I'll tell you how much of this is true based on the information I know about my own home. Some of these can be false because certain things happen in my home that I'm not aware of, upgrades and things like that, that it takes me weeks to figure out. But it says, nestled in the serene la landscape of Spring Hill, this modern, meticulously maintained home is a gym in Williamson County, spanning a generous lot. There is no generous lot where I live, by the way. Uh, the, this property epitomizes luxury, comfort, and the suburban dream. Four bedrooms, correct. 
three bass, correct. Three and a half, uh, one, two, three. Yeah, three bass. That's correct. Um, open living concept, vaulted ceilings, gourmet kitch, uh, kitchen featuring quartz, countertops, stainless steel appliances, and expansive island. All of that is true, except my kitchen is not a gourmet kitchen. I cook for a six-year-old and an eight-year-old. There's nothing gourmet that comes out except Chef Boyardee. Uh, open concept living with vaulted ceilings. That is true. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. Manicured lawn, private backyard with a deck and patio. Perfect for outdoor entertainment. Attached to car garage. Hardwood floors. Oh, okay, so all these things in here are true. But again, the framework, right? So we go in here and we can add additional information that we wanted to have. So uh, using the same above listing. Also add that the home has turf lawn, backyard, a vaulted patio covering, large fire pit area. Um, let's see what else. Expanded uh, driveway and. From the new June Lake. Uh, okay, so we're going to provide to it again some additional information to get a more robust listing description because, again, information in is information out, right? So as we go through here, we're revising the listing. And, and again, this is the framework, this is the basic stuff that we sit there and we think about the home and we try to figure out, well, what would I talk about if I'm going to list this home? And for sake of argument, I don't list homes. I could never do this portion of it because I would be hung up on the first sentence that I would go put in the, the system itself. But utilizing this framework opens the doors for many people that maybe couldn't do that same thing, but now can, and it looks very high professional, right? The fact of the matter is the average consumer is typically not aware that this technology exists. And the technology is accurate to whatever degree of the information that you put inside of it. You can put square footage in here, you can put wall coloring in here. You can put all the additional information in there, right? So if we go in and we say, take the above uh, and make a summary for a open house flyer that will be held on September 2nd, 2023 from the hours of Two, three, four. Now we're getting our open house flyer. Okay. We can't all be silent at once because that's not the fun thing. Do we have any questions so far? Anybody? This is a quiet room. All right. Okay, we'll move forward to the next thing. Yeah, the flyer is, is super simplistic. You can't turn it into flyers because this doesn't have the ability to put up all the graphics and stuff like that. There are uh, other AI models that will do things like create pictures, uh, things like that. Canva is a really simplistic thing. But what I would suggest is this, if we go into this, you hit this button here and then you can take it into a Word document or whatever document that you may use. And there it is. Then we can modify it whatever way we need to. We can take words out, put words in. But we, if you copy and paste this, by the way, this is good information for you to know. Um, if you go into this and you do like this and copy and paste, it's going to give you this black background. Okay, so the biggest thing that we have to do is we have to utilize the tools it provides, which is going to be this information here to clipboard it, copy, paste it. Also, hey, good job. There it is. Additional feedback. This was awesome. Okay, uh, for giggles, would it write a tenant? So that's a good question. Let's see if it will. You are the seller of one, uh, let's give it my address, 3031 Dallas. 
Drive, Spring Hill, C three seven one seventy four. I don't think it's going to create a a binding document, right? But let's see. Uh, thirty thirty one Faust Drive selling your home for I don't know seven hundred fifty thousand. I'm not a real estate agent, so I have no idea what my home would sell for. Selling your home for seven hundred fifty thousand. Uh, please create a document. Um, please create, create a sales contract. So we have disclaimer, but guess what? It's going to start spitting out the information. Now, is this going to be binding and holds up in court and everything else? No, but you know who this is good for? This is good for your people that are hell-bent on a FISBO that need a resource, right? Now, would I take this resource myself and go in and use this guideline? I would not. But I've seen FISBOs come over on what appear to be bar napkins. It's like two people got drunk at Tootsie's and decided to sell a house to one another, and they put together this contract, and it's probably not even not even as big as this. Uh, demand letter. Yeah, it'll it'll help you with many things. It'll help you. So let's stop generating this. What if we wanted to type an email to somebody? Okay, so this portion right here, as you see, there's a lot of fill in the blanks. Will it give you the basic outline? Sure, it'll give you the basic outline. What if we ask it title, right? Uh, what is title in the real estate world? You ever have a client ask you what title is? What if we were able to hand them an email or a document that says, hey, this is what title is, this is what it does. What if we were able to nurture our clients as we work through the process and give them bits of information that'll help educate them? Do you think we would provide a better or a worse experience for that person? Because the fact of the matter is, every person that is on this, by the way, thank you for your time for being on this, but every person that is on this is on this call to be a little bit better at what they do than their competition, right? a little bit better. That's all it takes. It provides a better experience. So here we talk about title and the definition of title. Chances are nine out of 10 clients go through the whole process not knowing 50% of what just happened, right? It's like they woke up and they had been drunk the whole time it took place. And they look around, they're like, wow, I'm in a house now. Uh, I don't know how I got here, but I'm here, right? Because they're not being educated through. Now, imagine if that same buyer said, oh, you've really got to talk to my agent, Danielle. She's amazing. She helped walk me through the process, and I understood exactly what title meant. And because my lender was awful, I had no idea what mortgage insurance meant, but she also provided me the information for that as well. So imagine that experience being shared with somebody versus the other experience. Oh, your agent did all that? Yeah. What did your agent do? Nothing. They opened the door, they sold me the home, and I never saw them again. Does that sound typical? That probably sounds like the 80% of agents that don't do the 80% of business, right? What I described prior to that is the 20% of the agents that do 80% of the business. Experience is everything. What if we did this? Um, please provide a list of utility providers in Spring Hill, Tennessee. Anybody ever have a client? They say, hey, who do I need to talk to to get my water turned on? Hey, who do I need to talk to to get my electricity turned on? Hey, who do I need to talk to for cable? Imagine being able to draw up this information quickly like this. And here's the thing. Duck River is the Murray County side. Middle Tennessee is the Williamson County side. Spring Hill Waterworks is correct. Wastewater Department, correct. Atmos is correct. These options are correct. Okay. So let's pretend like one wasn't. What do we have to do? Well, we just copy this. We go in and we paste it. We ask Google, hey, what is a uh, telephone option in Spring Hill, Tennessee? And we copy, we paste. I saved you so much time by you not having to go and double check every single one of these. And you provide this to the client as they're going through the process. Once again, better or worse experience for that client. As a lender, I have clients call me up. They're like, hey, do you know who provides water here? I'm like, uh, the water company, right? I don't have that information, but we're providing experience as we go through. We're also reducing the stress. Has anybody ever been stressed? They move into a new area 
and you've got to get your kids enrolled in school because the deadline's coming up, but you got to get the water turned on and they want a utility in your name, but you don't know who provides the utilities there. So now you're going to Google and you live in Williamson County, but Google keeps saying Duck River. Why didn't my agent give me this information before? What's going on here? We now have access to this information. We may have to double check it if we're not as familiar with the area, but let's face it. Those of you that sell homes in your area know exactly who it is that do these things. And if you don't know, you have a good idea. This isn't providing phone numbers and everything else. This is providing a roadmap of resources. Okay. All right. Any questions about any of that? Okay. I'm going to take you one level up. I'm going to make you a really big superstar. Okay. And here's how we're going to do that. You ever had those clients? It's their first house. They walk in the door. They don't know what to look for. All they see is, it's a house. Yep, it sure is. It's got doors. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's got windows too. Oh, that's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, then what's this thing on the wall? That's for the HVAC. Does it work? I don't know. That's where we can put the TV though. Is it? Yeah, it is. Oh, and I can park my Harley in the garage. Oh, you ride a Harley? Yes, I do. I don't, but I'm just, I'm giving the example, right? So what if we were able to uh, create a checklist for first time home buyers on items they should look for when walking through a new home. What if we asked you to create a list? What if we handed that list to the client when they walked in the door? We say, hey, Delana, thanks so much for coming here today. Listen, I wanted to give you this list. I realize it's your first time. And so I want us to walk through this list together because when you leave here, I want to make sure that we've looked at everything that we possibly can because I don't want to blindly put offers on properties that are only going to fail inspection. So together, we're going to walk through this home and we're going to take a look at things like the roof, the foundation, the windows, the doors, the landscaping, the siding, the paint, and the garage. However, I do recommend that you have a licensed home inspector, but we're just going to look at some glaring items together. Okay. And they go through, and by the way, your list has your letterhead on. It's got your contact information on the bottom right. And they're writing down notes, and they're going through, and they're checking things off. And then they arrive home, and guess who asks them about, hey, how was your, uh, how was looking at the homes today? Maybe their mom, maybe their dad, maybe their mom and dad on both sides of the family. How about a brother, sister, or guardian? Somebody asks them that information. They say, oh, yeah, my agent, she gave me a list, or he gave me a list of things that we went through, and we took a look. Here's the list, Okay. What do you think that mother, father, guardian, brother, sister, cousin's uncle thinks of that experience? Because their agent didn't do that. By the way, you're taking care of their, their person they care about, providing them information. Nobody else is providing them this information. You see how on the left side, it just said home buying checklist is populated over here. We can refer back to this checklist if need be. Listen, fire safety, windows, storage, attic. Again, you can go in here and pull some of this out. Noticeable cracks in the walls or ceilings. Listen, we don't want to spend the whole time inspecting the property. So we do the first things first. We walk through, do you even like it? I do. Okay, let's go over some of these items. Okay. What if you have an individual that as they're going through, they're like, oh my goodness, I bought this home and I had no idea. I didn't get cell phone reception in the home at all. And I hate it because I've, I've got a two-year contract with Verizon and now I got to spend the money to, to switch. Is that my fault as a real estate agent? No, it's not. But what if, what if we brought that to somebody's attention? What about local amenities? How close are you to Walmart? How close are you to Starbucks? How far are you from your school? Noise level? Do we ever walk outside and say, hey, shh, listen, do you hear how quiet it is? How peaceful this neighborhood is? It's 7.30 at night. All the families in the neighborhood are home. And you are out how quiet it is or what if you walk out of that same home and you, you you hear a southwest airlines jet that's getting ready to take off to mexico that we all wish we were on today and then you hear another one that's headed to dallas and another one that's headed somewhere else and then a train anybody ever have a client that's ever complained that they didn't know a train roared 100 yards from their backyard until after they bought the home and tried to sleep there the first night i don't sell homes but i've had clients come back to me what do you think they articulate to other people their experience of that agent was? Odors. They were walking a house and you're like, ah, it smells musty in here. What's that a sign of? 
well, man, this smells like new construction. We're bringing acute awareness to the things in our surrounding. People love homes that smell brand new, right? Just like you like clothes off the rack, you smell them and whatever preservative they put it in them to make them not wrinkle and get eaten up, eaten up by uh, moths makes it smell a certain way and we enjoy that, right? These are just gonna provide to us information that we can take and we can create this custom checklist. We don't have to rack our brain for hours, okay? We live, leave little blank lines. What if you were to create a little book, a 10 page book that covered these? And so you tangibly hand your client a little 10 page book that they can go and write in. There's this thing called anchoring, okay? And anchoring is when somebody associates something with a feeling or something of that nature, right? And so you're providing them an anchor to you because they have a book as they went through a situation that they wrote in, they interacted with, and they're anchored to you because of that process. I will tell you this, that book will be far more valuable than your Titan's magnet that goes on their fridge every year that you send to them, okay? All right. And just so you know, I, I wrote notes here because I like a good process flow, okay? We have a standard procedure that we operate in. And so I'm going to ask of you this, who here is on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook? Anybody? Okay, Megan is. I am. Do you know why? Because most of the people when they do research, what do they do? They go online, right? I, I coach mortgage professionals. When I talked to them, I had one guy, it, it was like a big slap in the face for him. I had been preaching to him about this YouTube stuff, right? This, this YouTube and this TikTok and all this other stuff that people use. And we're talking about a client he has. And he said, yeah, he was watching YouTube the other day. And it said, blah, 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 blah. I said, who was he watching? Some random guy said, why wasn't he watching you, Parker? And it was like a train hit him in the face. He's like, oh, my goodness, I have no idea. But we create this content. And by the way, we repeat ourselves a lot. I've been doing this 18 years. Do you know how many times I've told somebody what mortgage insurance is? Why didn't I create a video on that? Why didn't I go to the resource hub that most people go to to find information? I have a saltwater fish tank in my office. It is relatively new to my office. I've been in fish tanks forever and ever and ever. And there's this filter that goes underneath. And by the way, the filter, if you open it up incorrectly, will spray water everywhere. You'll have a big mess on your hands. You'll probably fry up half the electronics and burn your office down. And so I went to the resource we all do called YouTube. And I put in the filter and I watched a three minute video and I didn't spill a drop of water that damaged a single piece of equipment. I did spill a little bit of water but not anything that damaged anything, right? But I went to the resource that everybody does when they want to learn more about something, YouTube, okay? By the way, once you record the video, guess what? It always lives there. How would you like to do a process once and be able to duplicate yourself over and over and over? Or how about when you go to sleep at night and people are searching Nashville real estate market and they see your video, okay? So what if we did this? What if we said, I am a realtor, Looking to start a YouTube channel that is geared towards property. Please provide to me a uh, 10 episode YouTube. Um, 10 episodes, YouTube uh, videos that I can start with. Okay, so we're asking you, give me 10 episodes that I can do, right? Introduction to property investment. What is property investment? Why invest in property? Potential risk and, reward, and rewards. Listen, it's building the structure. You can literally start and say, hey, this is Alex. Uh, I am the, the expert realtor in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, listen, I know you're here because you're interested in investing in properties, right? And so we've covered the introduction and we go through why invest in the properties because real estate has shown year over year that the return on it's exponential compared to any other uh, investment. And then potential risk and rewards, boom, there's video one. Now we have video two, the basics of real estate financing. So we turn to what? Our preferred lender. 
Hey, I'd love to have you on the show today, Mr. Mr. Linder. I want you to talk to our clients about different strategies they can utilize in order to obtain financing for real estate properties. And guess what? You let that person talk, right? Because that's your business partner. You let them talk. You come down here to understanding real estate market cycles. Well, let me tell you this. That word cycles should be replaced with psychos, right? Because that's been the market over the past three years. It's been psychotic. Okay, it's changed. I've 18 years I've been in this industry. It's changed more in the past three years than anything I've ever seen. Okay. And so we talk about real estate cycles. We've been in so many. This is easy information for all of you. And it gives you the framework for that information. Choosing the right investment property, importance of location, evaluating property condition, assessing the rental potential. Listen, I'm not telling you to get on here and say, hey, you need to move into property in East Nashville because it's booming right now. Because guess what? In six months, it may not be. By the way, it's not booming as much as it was five years ago, right? And so we talk about general statements, choosing the right investment property. And you talk about the importance of location. Listen, when looking for investment properties, we always seek to find a location in which the area is growing at rapid pace right? Evaluating property condition. You want to go in with an open mind. You want to know that the property you're more than likely buying is going to need some repairs, but you need to know how deep those repairs shouldn't be. So you don't get into a situation where it costs you more money to fix than it does to buy. And assessing the rental uh, potential. That's where you talk about local rents, right? And you go and you say, hey, listen, in this area, the average rent of a, a two-bedroom apartment by the way, that has no privacy, goes for about $1,800 a month. A single family home should go for about X or throw a percentage. We just created 10 weeks worth of education. By the way, what if you weren't just a real estate agent? What if you created a 10 week educational course that helped coach people on buying their first investment property and you took this and you sold this product for $97 and duplicated yourself over and over and over and over and over? Remember, we're real estate professionals. Everything I should say should be backed by information that I've experienced before, researched, studied, found, right? Does anybody think that they can create a 10-week course or a 10-episode course for this? Possibly, maybe. Now we start thinking outside the box, right? What if we created this and we create this for our team? What if Danielle's dream is to be a team lead? I don't know that she is or isn't, but I'm suggesting, what if that is her dream? And we create these video courses to help our team grow and educate, right? Now we're thinking outside of this little tiny box they call real estate, okay? What if Jeff wanted to take this same thing and break it down? Yeah. What if you wanted to take this and make Instagram posts out of it? We always have that block. How many of you have ever been in a situation where you're like, I have to post on Instagram today. Why? Well, because my coach told me to, but I don't know what to post. Oh, you don't know what to post? No, I can't post anything. In fact, I'm not, it's been three weeks since I posted something because I can't, I don't know what to post. AI knows what to post. And watch this when we get done with this. And by the way, those of you that are, are maybe out of time, maybe you know, you, you've got other things you need to do. If you drop out, I totally get it. I'm going to take about, I could really run this thing for about 17 more minutes, if not longer. If you're finding value in this, hey, thank you. You're right, Delena. If you're finding value in this though, walk with me just for a couple more examples, because I promise when you leave here, you're going to be like, I didn't know that existed. And guess what? If you did know you that this existed, Congrats. I hope you're using this to help enhance your business because your competitors are not. I literally sat in real estate mastermind. I know many of you are probably in that group on Facebook. And somebody was talking about chat GPT. And it reminded me of when I was young and my grandma got a Zenith TV that had a remote control and she didn't know how to use it. And so instead she'd get up and walk 13 feet to the TV and push the little buttons that used to be on the Zenith remote or Zenith TV, right? Why? She had it. It was a corded remote, but she had a remote. She didn't know how to utilize the technology. So she went back to her old ways. Guess what? Tell me where on the screen right now that that grandma can push the buttons that she once could push because you can't find them. In fact, I'm 42 years old and half the time I can't find the power off button on my TVs. 
I've literally went to the extent sometimes I'm trying to turn my kids' TV off. I just unplug it. Why? I don't know where the power button is. Okay. So we have to utilize some of this information. Does that make sense? Who here is a book reader? Any book readers in here? Anybody ever want to read a book fast? You got that friend? They're like, I would, dude, I read 52 books a year. Brand new one every week. Okay, we got podcasters. That's good. So you, you, you have those friends that are like overachievers. I read 52 books. I read 87 books, audio books. Yes, I agree with that. But what if, what if we can take something like summarize uh, the seven levels of communication in less than 1,500 words? We're going to hop on a short flight, right? 1,500 words. Heck, you're not even getting in the air at that point. But I want to read the seven levels of communication. And for those of you that have read the seven levels of communication by Michael Mayer, we'll know exactly what it is it's talking about here. And it's going to provide to me the information that's contained in that book. I'm not going to have to read the whole book and all the fillers and everything else. I don't need to know about Nancy the waitress. What I want to know is the nuts and bolts of that book. Your friend that's an overachiever that read 52 books, you could probably read that in a week based off this. And for the right amount of money, I will read it to you. It's totally a joke. I'm not reading books to people. But, but what I'm getting at is we've made this very consumable. If you have a book that you've been interested in that has a lot of valuable information, now we can go through. And by the way, we can go through and we can find that section in that book and go read that specific chapter if we need to. We don't have to read the whole book anymore. Much like when you walk away from this training, you're going to be able to see the highlights of what it is we talked about and go directly to that portion in that video. We just made your time more valuable. We just made your time more efficient. And we can ask it for about any book, just about any book. Okay. All right. Um, we'll call this, oh, the last thing. By the way, up here, I meant to show you this and I forgot to, where it talks about, uh, oh, we can do it right here, actually. Yep. Uh, we've all had this block. So just some uh, hashtags for the above. You get in an Instagram, you're like, hashtags? Back in my day, they called that thing pound, right? Who remembers on the old ported phone? Your mom would say, Dial pound one, two, three, four. Okay. That's what we called it. The new generation calls it hashtags. Hashtags are here. And by the way, it's providing me some hashtags. And what is it doing? It's probably searching the internet for some of the popular hashtags that relate to what it is that you're doing. And it also gave you the hashtags that are relevant in each individual category. Now I have my hashtags and I have the category that they belong in. We also have some general hashtags. Do me a favor, never copy and paste anything out of here, by the way. Instagram, Facebook, all these other platforms, they know when the information is being shoved in there through ChatGPT. Those other platforms operate on genuine relationships. And so it's not going to allow for something to be pushed that isn't real, right? It's not going to allow AI to come in and replace genuine relationships with people, okay? So type this stuff in. We, we've already condensed this. Let's go ahead and just type that information in, okay? Simplify it. Um, last thing, how easy is this? Anybody ever work expires? Okay. You saw, Hey, Billy Bob, real estate agent at ABC, uh, Realty lost the listing. He, he was on the market for 124 days. You pick up the phone. You're like, Hey, seller of ABC one, two, three listing. Uh, I saw that you had, the, and they say, stop calling me. Hang up. Right. What do we say to those people? What about um, you are typing an email to a prospective seller whose home was previously listed on the market for 62 days? Type up an email encouraging uh, we got all kinds of messed up fat fingered words. Them to use you, me as the realtor. 
to the list property. I bring a high quality photographer, uh, drone footage, 18 years in the industry as the number one um, professional in my market. Okay, so we're going to make a typo of this email. Would it hurt? Listen, we're already being told no, right? If we never pick up the phone, never call these people, never email these people, they're already telling us no. So if we have this email that we put together that puts itself together, basically, and we send this out to all the expireds, would this be of any value? This was mindless. You could do this in a matter of 20 minutes. What I mean by 20 minutes, I mean, get all the emails, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, all these emails to all these people. If you got one in a year, if you did this 300 times in a year and got one, would it be worth your time in doing it 300 times in a year? Could be, right? What if you have this? You have a client that is upset because they missed the offer that I'm on a home they want to purchase. Type an email to that client. Be apologetic and assuring them it would never happen. Anybody ever have a call? You have somebody, they're emotional. You get emotional, right? They send you a text. You get upset. You start to type the email, then you delete. Then you start to type it again and you delete. And you're so caught up in your emotions that you know that whatever email you send is the wrong email to send, but you have to respond. Why don't we use something that doesn't have emotions to put together the email for us? So we have something like this. Oh, hope this email finds you well. Firstly, would like to extend my sincerest apologies for the oversight regarding the offer deadline of the property that you were interested in. I fully understand how important it is, how important this opportunity was for you, and I deeply regret that we missed out. In my line of work, okay, listen, I don't have to read this to you. But this is a non-emotional response to an email that otherwise would trigger emotion and likely get us either A, a bad review, B, an upset client, C, tarnish our name in some way, or D, not even be responded back to. That's even worse, right? So we can utilize this as a very neutral conversation to have with that individual. They don't know that you didn't type this, but you were able to remain professional and remove the emotion out of the conversation and provide to them an explanation, an apology, and some additional information to, look, I am taking immediate steps to ensure such an oversight does not occur in the future, including boom, boom, boom. I, I am sorry for the problem. In the future, I have fixed the problem by doing A, B, C. It will never happen again. Isn't that all we expect out of an apology? The computer types this for us. All right, I'm going to let you get back to your daily grind and hustle unless we have any additional questions. Does anybody have any questions? You can blurt them out. If, if you're not typing, if you're in a situation, we're at the point where we have went through all the discussion on this. Again, the biggest thing is this. The market is changing. We know it's changed, okay? Emotionally, I need your mindset to be in a place where we're utilizing tech and everything else because we have to be in front of as many people as possible. And this goes above and beyond the chat GPT thing, right? This goes more into mindset. We have to utilize the things that are time consuming so we can go ahead, or I'm sorry, utilize the tech to eliminate the things that are time consuming so we can do what we do best, which is be seen by the masses. A lot of your colleagues will not weather the storm. And I don't wish that on anybody, but our objective as professionals is to get out there in front of as many people as we can. So when the market shifts, we have more opportunities to help more people to provide better lifestyles for our families. Chat GPT will allow you that additional time so you can be out there, so you can network, so you can get in front of people, so you can do presentations. By the way, that was one thing I didn't cover. You can utilize Chat GPT to put together a buyer's or a seller's presentation. How extensive would that be if you provided the information for the particular property and handed the people when you walked in a handout that chat GPT put together for you? Are we winning or losing there? Okay. 
I want to thank everybody for their time. Listen, I know you spent a valuable hour with me. I want to thank Bell Law for having me on. If it wasn't for you, obviously, this wouldn't exist. We know that Bell Law does quite a bit, not only for their people, but their clients as well. And so be sure if you need anything title related to reach out to them. If you guys need anything related to chat GPT or anything else, feel free to reach out to me. Any other questions or anything? Thank you, Jeff. All right, awesome. This will be recorded. Listen, for everybody that provided emails, we're going to send this over to Megan. Megan's going to take this. She's going to send out the email with the link and the passcode. Actually, you know what? Um, Amber, so Amber is, is my assistant that I use a lot on uh, coaching and stuff like that. Amber's going to upload this to YouTube. And you're going to be able to access the YouTube, okay? And you're going to be able to share this with people, maybe on your team or up and coming people that you work with in the future to provide to them additional value as well. So look out for the email, look out for the detailed notes. We'll get it all over to you. And if you need anything from me, just let me know. Thanks again. Talk soon.